Jason Spangler, the Santee Swapper, back with an unboxing from New Jersey. 40 pounds of scouting memorabilia in two different boxes that a veteran scouter sent me from New Jersey. I'm really excited about this. I have already paid him for it. We've sealed the deal. However, I confess that it's been so long, I don't really remember what's in these two boxes. Sometimes in these deals where people are trying to go through the attic and pull all their scout stuff together, it may drag on for weeks or months before they finally get to the point of having everything ascended to, to me. And I confess in this case, I actually can't find the pictures that the guy originally sent me to know what's in here. So I'm gonna be just as surprised as you are. Let's get into the unboxing. All right, I've opened up the 22 pound box and found a really nice note from him that I want to share with you because I think it just kind of shows how some of these scouters, uh, kind of their mentality and where they are. Uh, here are the two boxes of things for you to go through. First off, I'm in no hurry. My hurry was getting it done and shipped. Like most of us, I don't have a date and a time to do something. It never gets done. How true is that? There are some extra odds and ends which have no real value, but you may find someone who's interested in them. My father was at Gilwell one time and brought back a hat and a tie. Uh, there's a green bar bill flag from the 85 Jamboree, a Pedro Patrol flag, a CSPID book from 1985, an old white web belt buckle from the old Explorer emblem, uh, other items, etc. Thank you for your help on these items. Any questions, I'll do my best to answer. Scouting has been a big part of my life, and better or worse has made me the person I am today. So that was a cool note. I just sort of wanted to read that because it's kind of personalized and means something. So. Let's get into this trash bag. Oh man. Whoa, that that is a big album right there, guys. Whoa, okay. Oh my lord. All right. Oh my god. Well, when I saw that this box weighed 22 pounds, I confess I was a little worried. I thought maybe it might be 22 pounds of books or 22 pounds of mugs. But in fact, it's 22 pounds of glory. Just scouting memorabilia, neckerchiefs, patches, an album full of hat pins, all kinds of really super cool stuff. I don't even know how I'm gonna be able to put all this stuff under the camera and show you guys, but that's what the unboxing is all about, so I'll try to do it a little bit here. Let's just get this one out of the way. This looks to be a really cool 1985 Jamboree collection of pins. So for any of you who were uh, collecting back in those days, or maybe you know now, the 1985 Jamboree was kind of the height of pin um, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, sort of the people going nuts over pins. And so this guy collected pins of the 85 Jamboree, has a whole photo album full of these. These look to be like pages that would hold uh, slides from like an old Kodak camera. And he's got tons and tons of tons of pins here. Some of them look to be maybe older as well. Look at that. There is an old Rover Scout pin right there, which I know is going in my collection. Let me show you guys this. So this is not just going to be pins that are uh, from the 85 Jamboree, but this is also um, many other pins. I think that's a BSA Rover pin. I'll have to check it out a little bit more. There's Lodge Flat pins here, just all kinds of pins. Now, the irony of this is I just had a good friend of mine, Doug, Chambers come and spend weeks and weeks with me where he organized all of my hat pins. Um, Doug's, Doug's a neat guy, I did a video on him. He's sort of the pin guy, if you will. And so now, Doug, I'm gonna need you to come back, man, because I got a whole nother album full of pins. <laughs> oh gosh. So here's some cool things, as he mentioned, there's the, the Pedro Patrol flag. Here is a whole bag full of Order the Arrow flaps. Again, it, we'll never get through this unboxing if I'm gonna go through it patch by patch by patch, but I can just sort of slide these up here and just show you there's a big old stack of flaps here. Probably some, some good ones in there as well. Lord, I don't know where to begin, guys. It's super organized too. He's got, I think he's broken it down by, for example, here's a bag of Philmont stuff. So if I lay out the bag of Philmont stuff, that's all to organized together. Here's another bag of pins. Oh man, I'm just kind of overwhelmed. Here's a bag of international items. Here's a bag of shoulder strips, Whew. including a uh, community strip there, Elizabeth. Okay. And then a whole bunch of CSPs. Here's a merit badge sash. I'm going to start dropping some stuff in here. 
Here's something kind of different I don't often get. These are, I think these are called hat brushes. I could get this wrong, but this is something that more caught on in Europe, not so much in America, but these were ways that you could identify your position by putting those in your hat if you're in those countries. Here's some more international stuff that came in this collection. Then a big old bag of bolo ties. I actually have a giant case of bolo ties in the back that I have to get organized. And so that will be fun to do as well. I'm looking to see, he mentioned about his dad going to Gilwell. You can tell that someone has been a scouter for a long time when they have an entire bag full of patches that go on uniforms. Red troop numbers, position patches from the 70s and 80s, all right here. So that is pretty good. Holy cow, check this out, guys. All right, Doug Chambers, I need you to come back. <laughs> Here's a whole bag full of pins, and these are really nice looking order the era pins that he would have been trading back in the day. And so um, I know that hat pin trading is not what it used to be, but there's still people who are interested in that. And there's a, just a ton of great pins here, council pins and OA pins as well. Oh man, guys, so I had such a massive pile here. I kind of decided I needed to take a pause and I needed to go through it. A lot of what I pulled out was international scouting items, things from uniforms, event patches, things like that. But I still got several bags here that I thought you might appreciate seeing and I'll pull up for you. So um, the guy mentioned in his letter that his dad had been to Gilwell. And so there is kind of a little bag here of wood badge items. And so just to kind of throw this up here and show you, there's of course uh, a lot of guys who've been through Wood Badge. I went through Wood Badge back in 1996. I'm a fox, proud to say. And so I wanted to keep out those Wood Badge ones to show you. Then also here's an interesting little bag of shoulder patches that are kind of like unofficial, but you see a lot of these around. I really have no idea who made these back in the day, but he had several of these Gilwell patches. And then a couple of other neat patches here, like this Seattle World's Fair patch, and then this Alpha Phi Omega patch. I was actually a member of Alpha Phi Omega at the University of South Carolina, the IOTA Mu chapter. So when I see an APO patch, I'm like, hey, I know what that is. All right, he also has what many collections contain, which is a box of reproduction. So the BSA did a reproduction set I believe it was in 1973, uh, could be 77, I might get that one wrong. But this BSA reproduction set, basically the way you can tell them apart, maybe this would be a good thing to show you all, is that on the back, these patches that originally were felt will have plastic backgrounds, okay? So the backing is gonna be plastic, and that's a telltale sign that these are part of the commemorative set. Um, especially with the old felts, you can also tell just by looking at them, but honestly, with some of the other ones, it's a little hard to tell because this was the BSA, you know, basically reproducing their own patches. So I'm sure they had the original, you know, uh, stitch patterns and all that kind of good stuff. Here's a little bag of World Jamboree items. Nothing too crazy there. And then here's a bag of event camp patches. Um, just a couple in here I thought maybe I'd throw up there and show you. Like this old Camp Treasure Island patch. So Treasure Island was the camp for the Philadelphia Council and of course, many of you know, that's what the Order of the Era was founded in 1915. And then I spotted this patch here. This is a trail patch. This rain dancer patch is really cool. Uh, I just think it's really beautiful, but this is a, a trail that's really well known. A lot of scouts have hiked. And so I'm not sure what you had to do to get, oh, I'm sorry, it was the double dancer. I'm not sure what you had to do to get the double dancer, but I thought that was pretty cool as well. Um, something I didn't mention earlier is this gentleman told me that he lived not far from Shift Scout Reservation. And so it doesn't surprise me that he has a little bag of Schiff patches. Schiff was a scout camp in uh, New Jersey with the Boy Scouts owned, the national organization owned. And for decades and decades, they did national training there. So you can actually go back and find lots of pictures of training courses that were held there. Um, of course, they don't own it today. I'm not sure, honestly, what happened to it, but uh, you will find a lot of Schiff stuff in collections. What else we got here? We got a little bag of NOAC and OA stuff. You might want to see that, that are kind of interesting. These um, OA Lodge patches. Some of these will go in my collection. I've told you all several times on these videos that I do collect 19, pre-1972 conclave patches from all over the country. I just think they're kind of a classic. Um, 
Nice bag here of NOAC patches. I won't even really pull through all these, but this is looking like it's from 1965 through about 1986 or in this bag. And then this bag, we have some more interesting event patches, which I'm always curious about, OA event patches. So I'll show you some of these. Um, again, more conclaves and activities for lodges. Uh, this gentleman actually lives now in Nebraska. That's his return address, but the, uh, and I think that's why maybe some of these patches you can see might match up with that, but also he, uh, you know, did his scouting in New Jersey. And so that's something right there. So some nice cool patches there. You can tell that he was in it for a long time, many decades, in fact. All right, kind of getting to the end. There's a couple of patches here. Oh, well, I say the end. We still have a whole other box, guys. These are kind of interesting just because they're international patches. And as I said, one of the things that I decided not to lay out and show you was all the bags of international patches. He had them organized by country. And so there's a bag for Australia, there's a bag for England, there's a bag for different countries. And um, I know this is mostly an American audience, so you probably want to see that. I decided to pull this out because this is pretty cool. I'm not sure when I would ever wear this or where maybe my children would ever wear this because it's a little small on me. But this is a Gilwell Park hat. It's got all the uh, British flag items on there. And then a whole big bag full of belt buckles. So belt buckles are kind of fun. People still will uh, collect those and honestly wear them. So the BSA has made belt buckles for every jamboree, every NOAC. You know, there's over and over and over. Sub camps, it just goes on and on. Here's some Gilwell ones here, Philmont, of course. So these are all really well taken care of. So this guy had a lot of stuff. So, all right, this next box only weighs 18 pounds. And once again, I have no idea what's in it. So let's jump in there and see. Mm, 18 pounds, man. All right, I, you can probably guess this was gonna be a trash bag as well. So let me kind of finish ripping into this and we'll just kind of unveil what's in the trash bag. Pretty clever way to ship it. So we have a ton of neckerchiefs. Whoa, man, neckerchiefs. Neckerchiefs, there's some OA stuff there as well, and a, a little book we might want to take a look at. Here's, he mentioned in his letter, there's an old CSP collecting guide, and so that is in here as well. Probably like a Prince Watkins, yep. Prince Watkins book, that's really cool. Literally, the stuff is falling off, you guys. There's just so much stuff. A big old bag of jacket patches. Neckerchiefs, more neckerchiefs, some jamboree stickers. Golly, I don't even know where to start. All right, so with the neckerchiefs, I'll just kind of see if there's anything super interesting here to throw up, seeing some jamboree stuff, some NOAC neckerchiefs. What's interesting to me too is I'm noticing that a lot of the things that are on the plastic bags, he had numbered. And I just don't know what that was for, if he had like a numbering system, because when, when I got this stuff from him, he didn't have it where there was like an inventory list, but there's a lot of stuff here that has a number on it. So he might have done an inventory at some point to kind of show what he had. Here's a cool troop neckerchief as well. So NOAC, look at the rest of these neckerchiefs here. It's a nice OA neckerchief from California. Jamboree we've seen before. I won't even mention the 73 Jamboree neckerchief that's in every collection. Unami. Okay, that's pretty cool. Here's some more OA neckerchiefs. I won't pull them all out, but there's one from the Far East Council. And you guys know I like Order of the Arrow stuff, so I keep seeing some OA neckerchiefs in here, which is a lot of fun. And they definitely must have spent some time in Mid-America Council. When I looked at the uh, Jamboree shoulder patches, there was a big stack there from the Mid-America Council in 1985. So I think that's where he was in 1985 in that council. He's got these pretty well organized. These look to be like troop neckerchiefs. And some of them are from Nebraska. So again, that matches up and then also Mid-America. And then let's see what's in this guy. I see a couple of Jamboree jacket patches, but maybe there's some other goodies in here. Kind of go through, I see Jamboree, NOAC, here's a pie from Alaska, World Jamboree, World Jamboree in Canada. There's kind of one I don't see very often, at least not the way it's cut. And then here's an interesting one from Japan. I haven't seen that style on that patch before. Ten Mile River, this is a jacket patch that you see quite often. 
And then here's a beautiful jacket patch from Lodge 97. This is a cut edge, and then here's a round edge. And then here's another one. I think that this one right here is from the Howardson Company. There's a story there where they were making some sort of semi-private like private issue jacket patches. I know for the 81 and later 85 Jamborees, I've seen things from them. And then one last bag, let's see what's in this one, because I do see a few OA pieces, and then there's an interesting book in here. So let's take a look at this book. All right, neat. So this is Lodge 37. This is just actually just an anniversary banquet, but it's got lots of Lodge history in there, so that's kind of cool. Somebody might like to have that. And then from Lodge 37, we have a nice little bag of items from that Lodge as well, so maybe he spent some time there. And I think that is pretty much it. We're kind of getting to the end. Maybe one more bag. So this is a massive collection. Um, just an accumulation where the guy had done a lot of scouting, but also had been doing some trading, obviously, at the Jamboree. And so, yeah, ton, ton, ton of stuff. So it will take me quite a while to go through this. But uh, that's kind of what the unboxing is all about. The surprise of me opening these items and kind of recycling them back into the hobby, getting them back into the hands of collectors. So I hope you appreciate um, all this. I know that it's a lot of fun for me. Jason Spangler, the Santee Swapper. Again, visit my website, scoutpatchcollectors.com, where you can find out more about what I've got going on, uh, find my newsletter, my podcast, and other little videos I make. Thanks a lot.